Hello from your National Weather Service here in Pocatello. Here's a, a look at our winter outlook as we head towards spring. It's valid from January 20th through February 19th. Again, we're always looking to assist our community in helping folks respond to weather dependent events, and this has been quite the winter so far. In fact, when we look at the percent of normal precipitation, you can see that over a large portion of central and eastern Idaho, we are anywhere from 125 to some places 300 percent of normal for liquid precipitation for this time of year. When you do some comparison to some of our observation sites, you can see that uh, most sites are running above their normal for this time of year. Uh, you look at uh, Burley, they're really close uh, to the, the extreme that they've ever reached. Uh, even Chalice has exceeded that. Idaho Falls right at that extreme value. Uh, but look at how far Stanley is at over 13 inches so far of liquid precipitation in their area since October 1st. We look at how much snow has fallen over the region. We compare that to last year at this time. You can see that in most areas we're above where we were last year. And in fact, significantly down in the Bear River Basin and also in the Raft River by uh, Burley and Malta, you can see that uh, we are well above where we should be for this time of year. In fact, it matches a lot of uh, the flood seasons we had in 2006 and also in 2011. Region-wide, you can see snowpack uh, is uh, above normal everywhere except for way out on the eastern plains in Wyoming. Uh, so a really good snow year overall for our region. When we look at the uh, snow water uh, equivalent, that's basically if you took a column and melted that snow, how much liquid inches of precipitation would be in that snow. This is where we are at as of uh, January 24th across the region. Now when we compare this value to 2011, which was our last big flood season, you can see that we are equal to 2011 or we actually have more over a large portion of our area in liquid content. When you take that same value that we have today and compare that to 2006 flood season, which the 2006 area was more in the Central Mountains, you can see that we are equal or above that level even in the Central Mountains area. Looking at uh, a concern that we have is our low level snowpack. Uh, these are some values from some of the historic flood seasons of recent 1997, the big year. Uh, 2006, again, Central Mountains. 2011 was the eastern half of Idaho. Our current values are in red across the area. So you can see that right now of, of this date, uh, the area in the Montpelier, uh, Bear River Basin is well above where we are in all three of those years. Idaho Falls were above. In uh, Moran, that's basically over on the Wyoming side, you can see that they're above the 2000 levels, but they've got a little bit to catch up if they're going to equal what they did back in uh, 1997 or 2006. Up in the uh, Sun Valley region, you can see that they're well above where they were in all three of those years. Uh, Pocatello uh, is well above. Uh, Driggs, though, that's the Teton Basin. Uh, they're equal to 2011, which they did have some flooding up there, uh, but they at least have a little ways to go to be equal to 1997. <clears throat> and then on the back side, the Salmon River Basin, you can see that the Stanley area, well above where they were uh, for those three historic flood seasons. Here's another way of looking at data. This is uh, Pocatello Airport. Uh, the data here has been collected since 1895, historically out here at the airport since 1939. Our overall snowiest record that ever occurred here was the winter of 1992-93, and that's the area in the blue graph that you see. Uh, the area in green is where we're currently at. So you can see for a while we're actually equal or exceeding where we were back in the winter of 92-93. And right now we're only about six inches behind where, we, where they were uh, back then. So if we continue with the same trend, there is a chance that we could equal or exceed that overall uh, snowpack or snowfall that we received here at the Pocatello Airport. Here's another way of looking at data. This is snow depth, how much is on the ground right now. And you can see significantly over a, basically all of southern Idaho, there is snow on the ground. Uh, the white areas you see, those would be like our reservoirs, American Falls, Walcott, down at Bear Lake. Uh, but other than that, you can see that there is some sort of snow across everywhere as of January 24th. When we compare that to the flood season of 2006 at this time, you can see that overall, uh, the big area of the eastern half of the state where we did have that flooding, uh, we are exceeding where we were in 2011. Now let's compare that same data to 2006 where we had that flooding in the central mountains. This is where we're at right now. This is where we were in 2006. So the big difference between both of those years is we probably have more snow now and especially down at the low levels 
uh, for impact for our purposes. Taking a look at how our water supply is doing in the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, uh, this is where we currently are in the amount of water that's held in our upper Snake Basin. Uh, they're following particular rule curves that they do through the U.S. Corps of Engineers. So we're at 56% of capacity. Comparing that to last year, you can see that they're riding the same uh, value for this time of year of what they were doing last year. And uh, obviously we'll be coordinating with them as we get to a little closer to a runoff season as to how they're going to operate and what, how much water is going to flow down through the system. Let's shift gears a little bit and actually look at our long-range outlook. Uh, this is from our Climate Prediction Center, the folks that look at our long-range forecasting. Uh, as we mentioned in our previous uh, broadcast, we have a La Nina currently in effect. This is basically a cold pool of water in the Central Pacific with some warm water off the coast of Australia. And how that typically impacts our weather patterns is we typically end up with a little wetter than normal on the western coast and a little cooler than normal up through Alaska and through uh, Canada. And I think overall that pattern has actually fell, uh, come out pretty good this uh, winter so far for us. So as we look ahead, this is uh, through the first uh, uh, couple of weeks or a couple of weeks or so into uh, February. You can see that right now we're expecting uh, some potential for cooler than normal uh, and uh, drier than normal through Groundhog's Day. And then we're going to shift a little bit as the weather pattern uh, changes from high pressure to uh, another uh, system coming into the area. You can see the Pacific Northwest, there's a, a good chance for below normal temperatures. But here's the dramatic thing is after a week of respite from now until uh, that first week of uh, February, we're going to shift probably back into a wet pattern uh, at least through probably the uh, second week of February. So overall for the month of February, this is the uh, temperature trend. So basically overall for the, the 28 days of February, we're looking for um, normal temperatures and uh, normal precipitation. So that's about an inch worth of precipitation or more across uh, central and eastern Idaho we're expecting. Now let's take a look at three uh, three month uh, averages as we go through temperatures. As we finish off La Nina, we expect that to end uh, through the spring time frame. So that'll actually influence how our overall uh, weather patterns are going to uh, look towards the spring time frame and now into summer. So as we move forward, here's uh, March, April, and May as we start to begin to melt that snow. April, May, June. I think more importantly, uh, May, June, and July, there is that anticipation of maybe being above normal for uh, temperature. So depending on when that shifts in will really depend on how fast that snow melts off. As we work towards the end of summer, you can see that there's a really good likelihood that we'll be above normal for temperatures overall. Then we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and extend it just so you can get a feel for next winter time frame. The current trend is looking towards maybe above normal temperatures even as we head into next winter. Uh, now let's look at the actual precipitation. So as we finish up the winter time frame and start into to, uh, spring, you can see overall there is a chance to be above normal for a portion of our area as we finish off the winter time frame. And then as we have that La Nina start to fade, you can see that we go basically back to normal trends for our precipitation through the rest of spring time frame and then even into summer. Mind you, our two wettest months are May and June across central and eastern Idaho. So when we're calling for average conditions, think about that as we have that wetting wet combined with what's already in our snowpack. And as we finish off in the spring time or uh, fall time frame and then into next uh, winter. So where does that leave us then? Is there a drought out there? Well, this is where we were last year at this time. You can see there were some impacts across the region. This year, really no impacts for a drought, which basically means last year we had uh, this in our area, so we did have some impacts. And our forecast outlook are no problems for, for water concerns. I think our big one we want to uh, turn our attention to is looking at potential flood impacts that we have as we work towards uh, our spring time frame. Uh, a lot of it depends on snowpack. It depends on the elevation of that snowpack. We have a lot of low-level snow that we have to figure out how we're going to melt off or how it's going to blow out of here. Uh, we also look at how fast it warms up in the springtime, and then also whether it's going to be windy or just concentrate on this first flood potential, and that is ice jams and aerial sheet flooding for snow melting. These are pictures from 2006 and 2011 when we had these particular incidents occur across our area. So start thinking about how are you going to channel water in your regions that you're responsible for when this starts to go off. Hopefully we can have it go off slowly, but there is a very good potential 
that because we have so much as we warm up, if we get some rain out of that snow, this sometime late February into March, we could have these type of impacts. So where are we going to have the snow melt and ice jam concerns? Everywhere. Anywhere we are across the, basically all of Idaho and even into Wyoming, parts of Utah, you need to start thinking about where are we going to channel this water and when is it going to come off? How is it going to impact our house structures but also our roadways and so forth? Our second flood potential is what are we going to do when all that mid and upper level snow starts to melt? Again, we showed you some images from our 2006 flood season and also 2011 in comparison. We are above basically both of those right now in the snowpack for this time of year. That always can change a little bit, but start thinking about how are we going to handle the water that comes down. So this is our current flood potential areas across the uh, central and eastern part of, of Idaho. You can see that up uh, in the Stanley Basin we do have a, a best potential there. We also have the Teton Basin that we want to be concerned with, and also the Bear River and over into the Raft and Goose Rivers, and the Portneuf Basin. So all th three of those regions, you really need to know that there is a gr best potential for spring runoff flooding. In addition to that, we are looking at areas of concern in the Central Mountains, uh, the Bigwood and Lostwood River Basins, uh, the Birch Creek, and also potentially on the Limhi uh, going down towards uh, the Salmon area. Then finally, when we look at the main stem Snake River and also the Henry's Fork, because of the control regulations that the Bureau of Rec does on that area, right now we're just monitoring that. And uh, as the snowpack uh, season grows along, we'll be working with them to make adjustments uh, whether there is that potential that we'll see some flooding. So we'll update this graph as we go along for this season. But we just wanted to show you this up front. So just remember, as you plan for our, our upcoming uh, winter season, uh, as we ex exit out of it, be aware that you need to think of those planning conditions. You can always listen to our weather briefings. Those are on our web page, uh, usually posted by 5 in the morning. You can also get any type of weather data that's available at uh, weather.gov slash Pocatello. If you do have some information, in addition, uh, pocatello.weather at noaa.gov allows you to send images to our staff. So if you have any questions, you can always contact our folks at our weather office 24 hours a day. We hope this briefing has been of value to you, and we'll talk with you later.